Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message for this weekend is The Power of Words. And we begin our worship in the name of the one who created us, Jesus Christ, who redeems us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and sustains us. Amen. And so our gospel for this week is according to St. Mark, the first chapter, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, throwing him into convulsions and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> and again, the title of our message for this day is The Power of Words. And let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So Christians are people of the word. And um, indeed, from the very beginning of the Bible, right? The book of Genesis, it begins in the beginning, God said and, right? All creation came into being through that living, active word of God. Um, one of my favorite pieces of scripture is from the prologue to the fourth gospel, we know is the Gospel of John, and it says, in the beginning, it, it is echoing the book of Genesis, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it goes on to speak about that this Word was Jesus Christ, God made flesh, and um, that this, this word of God made flesh, that he lived along, among us full of grace and truth. So the Gospel of John is saying that in Jesus Christ, we have a new beginning that parallels the creation of all things, um, and that in Jesus, we have a completely new creation. So, and again, Jesus as the Word, the living Word, the Word made flesh. So, in today's Gospel, which comes still in the very first chapter of Mark, um, so Jesus is just beginning his ministry, and he goes to Capernaum, and he goes to the synagogue, and it is the Sabbath day, and um, often 
guest rabbis would be invited to teach. Um, preaching and teaching were pretty much the same thing. They'd be given a text from the Hebrew Bible, from Scripture, and asked to, to teach on it, to preach on it. And so, um, Jesus is teaching, we're told, but there is in the synagogue, in the synagogue, notice, not outside, but in the synagogue itself, a man with an unclean spirit. And we're told that this unclean spirit recognizes and acknowledges Jesus's power, right? Because he says to you, what do you have, what do you want with us, Jesus um, of Nazareth, Holy One of God? And uh, we know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus, um, we're told, casts this unclean spirit out of the man and says, be quiet, come out of him. And um, it does. And so, um, as I was thinking about today and about this um, gospel of Jesus casting out something unclean, something that was um, keeping this man from living fully uh, in God, who is life, and I was kind of paralleling that with our lives today and our own lives, but also the lives of people we know. And just as Jesus's word has power to heal and to set free, so also today our words have power to heal um, and to set free. But sometimes it's difficult to know which words are really spoken in this power of God, which words are of God, and which words are not. Um, in the first reading for today, it was from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verses 15 through 20, and the people are poised ready to enter the promised land. And Moses says to them, when you enter the promised land, do not follow their gods. Do not fall for other gods. Do not worship false gods, but worship the Lord your God. And he knows that his time is coming to an end. And he says, he promises them that God will raise up for them another prophet who will speak the word, preach the word, teach the word of truth. And we Christians, of course, think of that prophet um, following like in the, in the lineage of Moses as Jesus. But today, um, for us, you know, what, how, how do we discern who is speaking of God, who is speaking of truth, who it truly is of the word, the God's word, and who is not. Well, today's readings kind of give us um, some tools, some hints for how to discern. And um, the first thing in this gospel lesson itself, it says that Jesus spoke with authority and not as the scribes. And the word authority in Greek is exousia. And the ex means like outside of, and usia means like being, outside of being. And it literally means outside of ourselves. So in other words, when Jesus taught, his word was outside of self, like ego self, and was of something bigger, was of God. So I often, for my little tool of discernment, um, if someone's speaking, uh, even in the church, even in a sermon, even from the word of God, but it's all about them, 
um, and, it, and it's not pointing only to God, that's a hint for us. If it's filled with ego, if it's filled with the, the preacher or the teacher's self, as opposed to being outside of self and open to that bigger dimension that is God, then that's our hint that it is, it is not um, the true word, it is not of God, but it is, um, it is leading us away from God. Okay, so that's the first hint. The second hint is Jesus's word healed this man. It, it cast out this unclean spirit. It cleansed this man and it brought him to a place of healing, of wholeness, okay? So um, if someone's words are, are causing division and, and strife and are filled with jealousy or envy or anger or bitterness, or all these things, that's a pretty good hint that they are not of God. But if the, these words bring healing and wholeness to the hearer, then that is a second kind of clue um, that their word is of God. Um, third, third kind of clue. In our second reading for today, it's from 1 Corinthians 8, verses 1 through 13. And this is Paul's audience, the people of Corinth, asking him if it's okay to eat food that had been sacrificed to idols. And in the community in Corinth, there were some problems. There were struggles between, between these kind of um, egotistical, superior acting um, Christians who thought they were um, more mature spiritually than others in the community. And so they said, well, there's no such thing as idols. So we as Christians can eat whatever we want. It doesn't matter if these things were sacrificed to idols. We know idols don't even exist. But Paul um, says something quite different. Paul says, okay, you might be mature enough to know um, that there's no such thing as idols. And so you have no squams about, uh, no problems with um, eating these foods. But if it causes a weaker brother or sister to stumble or to struggle in their conscience, then you who are stronger should always sacrifice of yourself for the sake of the weaker brother or sister. So that's really important. And Paul concludes by saying, hey, for the sake of my weaker brother or sister, I'll never eat meat again if it's gonna cause one of these little ones that God loves to stumble, if it's gonna be a tripping point or a stumbling block for another. So sisters and brothers, we should always think of our words, but also our actions. And if they're going to cause a little one to stumble, then maybe we need to refrain. Um, maybe we need to withhold. Maybe we need to word it in a different way that it does not cause uh, a little one or a weaker one to stumble. So that's a third hint. And then finally, um, I remember years ago going on a clergy retreat and the topic for all of us was congruity. Congruity. The, we, we really shared with one another um, you know, as clergy, we say we believe A, B, C, but do our lives reflect that? Are we living in such a way that there's a congruity between the words we teach or preach and the way we live? A commentary I read this week said that Jesus, when he taught, when he spoke, his word had such authority because there was this complete 
full congruity between the words he said and the way he lived, he who was the living word. So as we look at others, um, I think we need to look for, I mean, no one's perfect, of course, right? But we need to look for some amount of congruity in the person's own life. Are they really seeking and are they on the path of um, practicing what they preach, of living what they teach, of truly living their own words? Um, unfortunately, so many times I hear people who call themselves Christian talking about God and Jesus and how we are to love one another, but there's a lot of hatefulness, um, unfortunately, among people who call themselves Christians. And I think I've always felt that for people who are new to the faith or for younger people, um, that incongruity is, is glaring is glaring and it really turns people off um, who are new to the Christian faith. Because sisters and brothers, words have power. Jesus's words had power to set free, to cleanse, to heal. But as followers of Jesus, our words also have power to help set people free, to help heal and bring cleansing and wholeness to people's life. In the passage from St. Paul, he says, um, you know, knowledge, because the uh, people of Corinth prided themselves on being very knowledgeable. He said, knowledge puffs up, builds up self, builds up ego. But he said, love builds up, builds up. So sisters and brothers, um, do our words, do the way we speak to others reflect that edifying love of Christ or not? Those four things are the litmus test um, that we should always hold up to anyone who claims to be speaking in the name of God, but also to ourselves when we look at our own words and how we use them. Are they filled with self and ego or do they come from that higher place, that bigger dimension that is God? Do they bring healing and wholeness to others? Or do they, do they bring strife and fraction and division? Do they sacrifice self for the sake of the weaker brother or sister? And is there a congruity between the words we proclaim and the way we live? And are we living in a way that puffs us up or that builds others up? Words have power. Jesus, the living word, has power to set you free and bring you healing and wholeness. And then in Jesus' name, we are called to go forth and speak the words that bring, that set others free and bring healing and wholeness and edify and build others up in the way of Christ's love. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen.